Khushhal Bachpan, a series of topics related to young children from birth to 7 to 8 years. The series is brought to you by Dr. Pooja Padbidri, founder of Baby Shastra. And Dr. Ushma Goradia, founder of Active Karya Physiotherapy Clinic in Bangalore, India. And it's fine. Huh. Yeah, so cooking is, you know, I'm going to talk more from a scientific perspective. Why do we want our children to cook? Okay, scientific and health perspective. So now, huh. so to begin with, we have this in psychology, we have this Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and we already went through this. At the bottom of the pyramid is that purple uh, bar, which says food, rest, and water. And if you need food, then you need to learn how to cook food. That is the basic thing. And fa the foundation uh, of life, you know, is basically uh, uh, healthy body and healthy mind. We all know that. But this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We all know that eating, ho eating home cooked meals in our culture, in the Indian culture, this is not new to us. That, you know, we have healthier and happier life. If we cook at home, then there are there's less sugar, there's less preservatives, less artificial coloring. You can control the ingredients, that is the amount of fat and the spices and the salt and the sugar, everything that you want. It also leads to weight loss when you um, eat home cooked meals at least five days a week. That is the research coming out. Cardiovascular health and of course home cooked meals uh, are associated with a longer life. And uh, you know, Home cooked meals don't have to be very elaborate. They can be simple uh, because, you know, somebody has said the greatest dishes are very, very simple, simply made. Okay. Now, when it comes to your child, you cannot really impose, uh, uh, impose anything on your child. You cannot do that. Uh, you just have to create a environment where you involve the child, make an environment where your child is interested to participate. That is the kitchen. Make it playful, bring in curiosity, talk to the child. Even if, uh, even if the child is very young, let's say eight months, nine months, talk to the child what you're doing um, and what the child is doing on the kitchen floor, you know, on the mat. Are you sitting? Are you playing with a box? Are you playing with a, a pot, etc.? Just talk to the child, you know, so that there is some interest and motivation uh, created. In short, you be a role model yourself if you want to involve your kids. You can also delegate simple tasks to kids. Don't be afraid and always provide a lot of positive reinforcement. Young children need a lot of positive reinforcement, particularly during cooking. Uh, so cooking is basically in our, I'm very proud that, you know, in India, we have a rich cultural heritage of cooking region wise, although we have all the common ingredients, the dals, the masalas, the pulses, the grains throughout India, we use, uh, you know, they're all common, you know, the rice, wheat, dals, etc., the masalas. However, each region, each state has such different dishes um, uh, churned out. We really have to be proud of this. And this comes from generations of grandmothers and aunts and mothers. So now it is up to us how to take this forward to our future generations. It's the greatest gift you can give, the gift of teaching cooking or the gift of learning how to cook. That is the greatest uh, Excuse gift. me? Yes. Yes. What are we cooking? Uh, Okay, we are, so we are not cooking. Uh, we are, we are not, not cook. going to cook. <laughs> so, this okay. is the, <laughs> so this is the greatest gift that you can uh, pass on to your future generations. Sure. Uh, because as you said, you know, wisdom is passed on from generation to generation. Um, now, so some of the barriers for today's adults that I see, because, you know, every generation, the style of parenting changes, you know, which is a, which is a fact that we have to accept it. But at the same time, you have muted yourself. So you could not hear until now? No, no, just last 30 seconds or so. Ah, okay. Just the last, yeah. Okay, okay, great. So, um, uh, you know, uh, parenting styles have changed every 10 years from generation to generation. And we really have to introspect as to why 
today young adults who are parents you know in their late 20s or early 30s uh, many of them are afraid in my experience to let the child into the kitchen and why because you know there are so many parents have said oh they'll create a mess and i have to uh, clean it up it is very time consuming to clean it up it is very uh, it requires a lot of patience uh, believe me time consuming and patience it is much easier to do things for your child rather than to teach them uh, this is not only in cooking but this is wearing shoes and socks wearing your clothes a physical therapist and occupational therapist will vouch for this that it is much easier to treat, uh, to do things for your child get done with it rather than teaching them it takes a long time to teach them it takes a lot of patience on the part of the parents to teach them uh, as an adult are you able to modify your cooking styles or not meaning are you able to discriminate yourself what is safe for your child what will your child be able to do or not be able to do uh, are you fear you know are you afraid that your child uh, or something will happen in the kitchen in terms of fire you know safety fire um do you have self confidence in your own self uh, as to what you can make your child do or not do and then whether your kitchen environment is suitable or not you know these are the factors that come to today's parents minds uh, but the last factor uh, you have to understand that until 40 years ago or even until 30 years ago a lot of kitchens in india were on the floor they were not the standing kitchens even in the city like mumbai uh, today also in villages we have kitchens on the floor and there are children who are learning to cook i myself grew up in a kitchen, in a house where there was kitchen on the floor until i was quite in middle school and you know we all learned uh, myself my cousins we all learned to cook from a very young age so that's just my two cents that uh, you know kitchen environment yes it worries you but you also have to look at the other aspect so uh, the next slide So here I have uh, some of the PTs here said that children with autism, you know, they they make them do things in the kitchen. So yes, this is not shot in my clinic, but a parent was very kind to send this to me because uh, just like other PTs, I advise parents to involve their children in the kitchen. And remember, this child was very hyperactive. He he's diagnosed as moderate autism. He could not even sit or attend to anything a year ago. And um, uh, look, after a year, you know, he's he is doing so much. He's shelling peas straight for, I think, 15, 20 minutes. He would shell all the peas. He's sorting, right? He knows where to put the peas, where to put the shells. And um, just look at when peas fall down, he will be aware. See? See? Body spatial awareness. When the peas fall down, he's able to pick them up, you know, the attention. So, and now he's trying to touch the piece. This is very normal for a four-year-old. Let the children do it. Any four-year-old, any child, let them do this. Uh, they may even pop some of the piece in their mouth. You know, some things are edible raw and that's fine. So, um, and see how he's reaching. So this is a child, uh, I'm very happy, you know, when children like this make progress and I don't do this kitchen work in my uh, clinic, or rather I do the prerequisites or the, foundations to the kitchen work and I give a lot of instructions to parents at home uh, how they can train their children uh, uh, doing things at home with the gadgets or the kitchen things that they have. Now, again, he's peeling, this child is peeling potatoes. So boiled potatoes, of course, he's peeling. But this is a great accomplishment. He's only four years old. Just one year ago, or even I think 10 months ago, he could not even sit. He could not even look anywhere, not even attend. And he can peel potatoes, so uh, boil potatoes. And then he will cut. So I, what I do is, uh, a lot of times what I do is I um, ask parents to get these plastic knives. I have a stash of them because they're available on international flights. Uh, the flight people are going to throw them away. Uh, so since years I've been collecting them and I give out to parents these plastic knives where they can cut things like bananas and boiled, ap boiled potatoes, apples, watermelon, all of these things. So these knives I've even given to like a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old and, a half -year -old, and parents have used them and really been very happy with them. Uh, this is another child. Uh, again, she had uh, a lot of attention and other things. But the part I liked here is that she cut these beans without her mother directing her to do so. Uh, 
I think one day the helper, the maid or the helper would not have come and the mother was very busy doing things and this girl just saw some beans in the kitchen and started cutting. Isn't that a wonderful uh, <laughs> thing to see? So cooking with kids, it's not only about ingredients, it's not about recipes, it's not only about cooking alone. There's a lot more to it. It is about imagination, creativity, and of course, empowerment. That means you're making your child independent. It is a lot about, as you see in the two columns, it is sensory motor, it is problem solving, it is related to physical and emotional health. Uh, children develop a healthy relation with food, and then of course, the speech vocabulary communication. It is cognition. You are instilling curiosity in your child when you involve them in the kitchen. Um, you're doing math, you're teaching them math unknowingly or knowingly. You're teaching them chemistry and biology. You know, when you, uh, uh, when, when you just show them how a dosa batter is fermented, uh, how you germinate, you know, moong and chana and all, uh, when you germinate, when children see them growing from day to day, uh, they're very curious, they're delighted. And if you let them set the curd, just put in the culture the previous night and explain to them, of course, this is five years old, but you explain to them that tomorrow it will be solid. It creates, it, for, for a child, it's like magic. So there's a lot of chemistry and uh, biology going on there. And once you understand the foundations of cooking, no matter what dish or what cuisine, you can cook anything. Uh, this is a quote from an author in the West, but I would say the same for um, generations of our grandmothers and mothers, right? So now sensory system. So all the PTs and OTs, the professionals here, um, would be aware of the eight sensory systems. I don't have to you know, go through them. Parents who are here, um, if you're not aware of the sensory systems, I just tell you a little that we learn through our sensory systems. Sensory systems contribute a lot to brain development, to the development of our nervous system from zero to about six years of age. So tactile is touch, uh, vestibular proprioceptive, visual, olfactory smell, taste, auditory is hearing, and introception is our internal sense of hunger and thirst and sleep and fatigue, etc. But from these sensory systems, by involving your child in cooking, what are you getting? The components, you, the child is learning about texture and consistency. Child is learning about post gradation. The child is moving the head and body in space. So there you're bringing in the vestibular system. You're bringing in the visual spatial awareness, body spatial awareness. Uh, you are also addressing bilateral integration and more so sequencing that the first step, second step, when you make a dosa, you first put the batter, then put the oil, and then maybe you cover it, and then maybe you flip it. So, you know, there's some sequencing going on. Eye-hand coordination. Uh, you listen to different sounds in the kitchen, utensils, the refrigerator humming, something dropping, something breaking, uh, water running in the sink, uh, water shutting off in the sink. You know, you smell the flavors of the food, even raw as you're processing them, you're washing them, you're cutting them. Uh, you know, foods, the flavors do come out. And then all of this can trigger hunger. I've not gone on to uh, look into research, but in my experience, all of this can uh, trigger hunger, you know, the interoception part. Okay. There's a lot of motor learning. There's a lot of cognition, attention, and imitation going on. So sensory and motor, both uh, uh, parts of the nervous system we are addressing when we are doing cooking, when we are involving our children, in cooking. So motor, and again, the list that I've put up here is not all comprehensive because I didn't have space and you know, there's extra, there is a lot of words that can, you can go on adding to it. But if you look on the left side, motor, you know, you pick up things from the floor. Maybe you lift a bottle, you lift some vessels, you're bending down, you're reaching overhead, you're bending down to reach a drawer, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, lower than your, at your waist level. Uh, in the Indian culture, many times we sit on the floor and we uh, cut vegetables, we pluck greens and we do it in a group, you know, so then you are doing it uh, social. So you rise from the floor every time. You're also addressing the social part. A lot of motor planning and a lot of organization of workspace, whatever workspace you have, whether it is a small kitchen or a big kitchen, your brain is learning how to organize your working space. First comes this, then comes this. Once this is over, you can remove it and put it somewhere else, you know, organization of workspace. 
cognition we already went through this in the beginning you are learning about the real world so rather than teaching children any child whether special needs or not any child should be learning from the real world not from flash cards and books and tapes and screens uh, you are learning how to even a young child as old as 2 is learning how to sort and categorize uh you are processing information the child is processing information and then uh, working memory is being addressed because i have to do this i have to do this or i forgot to do this or this got burnt or this is raw or this is not cut or you know there's working memory there's lot of math going on uh, unknowingly knowingly or unknowingly counting and then volume how volume even a 2 year old 3 year old child knows the difference even non verbally between a big vessel and a small vessel uh, five years old you can ask them to uh, uh, you know wrapping up the kitchen you can ask them to remove the leftovers basically empty out the bigger vessels and what you can do is have your own child uh, select the vessels you know uh, this leftover dal is only this much which which vessel or which box will it go in or this sabji is only very little which box or which vessel will it go in or will it go into a katori or will it go um, you know very little buttermilk is left can we just put it uh, in a glass you know so you are learning the child is learning about volume application in real life and again as i already spoke chemistry and biology because i learned from my own daughter when she was in the 6th grade Uh, i was having her mix curry once you know the besan and the yogurt i was having her mix mix meaning uh, churn it with a wooden that firmi and she asked me how long should she do so i told her in gujarati you know that uh, there's a word called ekras meaning it becomes homogeneous so she asked me what is ekras so i said it's homogeneous and she was in the 6th grade and i think they had just started chemistry so she turns around and asked me do you have chemistry in gujarati you also have you also have chemistry in gujarati and then you know the light bulb went on in me oh you know <laughs> even a child is thinking like that an 11 or a 10 year old so cooking is a lot of chemistry and biology um, the child is learning uh, so i have created my own graph i came up with this uh, everything that we spoke about right now the sensory vocabulary communication gross motor fine motor fine motor i'm going to uh, uh, it's the next slide and gross motor you'll see in my videos you know how it, how children engage in gross motor play so we went through this whole graph you know attention imitation what you do the child does or what the elder sibling does the child does cognition curiosity oh my god what is this you know problem solving Uh, chemistry biology math so all of this together is intertwined interrelated the child is learning it's going on in their higher levels of the nervous system whether you know or don't know but the child is learning and you are as a parent by involving your child you are doing a great job at teaching them survival skills uh, teaching them you know uh, taking care of the health you're building up life skills you're building up savings i'll talk to it about about it more executive functioning executive functioning is setting goals planning a lot of uh, you know working memory uh, executive function there are a lot of other sub components and independence everybody wants a child to grow up into an independent adult so i made this own graph of mine uh, how you know with cooking how you can really contribute to your child's life now fine motor again this is not an all comprehensive list you can add a lot more to this but look at the movements when pts and ot's we talk about fine motor we talk about prehension we talk about the kinds of grasps we talk about the muscles uh, uh, nerves etc but i'm more interested besides that i'm more interested in the uh, uh, what you call the kind of movement you know we can peel we can shell we can mash knead squeeze dough uh, press the dough uh, press something else you know mix mix with her, either with your hand or even with a spoon or a scoop with a spatula we can coat oil so uh, when we make idlis and dhoklas you know we coat the the uh, the container with oil we coat it either with our fingers or with a brush you know different people have different ways of doing things you can slice so things like banana chiku mango watermelon you can slice very easily 
uh, and then the other moments you can spread as in sandwiches, make balls with your fingers or with your uh, palm and fingers both. You can roll out in many different ways, but you can roll the uh, roll a paratha like as in making a frankie, or you can roll out a roti. You can pluck the greens. So like palak is much easier to pluck than other greens. You can have the child even tear the palak, you know, tear the greens. You pour, not only liquid pouring, but when you fill your grains into bottles or burnies, you can have your child do it. Sprinkle, so you sprinkle, you know, chat masala or salt or whatever, jeera powder, whatever. And then of course, cut boiled vegetables, bread slices, uh, you can cut uh, very easily. So just quickly, some of the, so now motor learning, all the PTs and OTs here, we know motor learning is very important. And the two features of motor learning are, one is repetition, that is you keep on repeating, 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 uh, till you get it, you know, you repeat the task. And the other feature of motor learning is variation. So the tools in your kitchen, every kitchen would have at least half of this, I would say. I found them in my kitchen when I really went to look for them. And that's why I would like to share with you. So the tongs part, I really share it with parents in my clinic that you need at least two varieties of tongs in your home. And tongs means not only the roti tongs because they don't bounce. I want the samosa, the cutlet tongs, you know, uh, 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 I, these, these kind of tongs. Now again, they are big and they are small and then, uh, you know, different one, different using a different force. So tongs and then rolling pins also you can see the variety you can see the thick one you can see a thick thin one and you can see the ribbed one or a ridged one uh, churn you can do it manually uh, uh, it gives great tactile input you're working on bilateral coordination you're working on the sound when you churn the sound is very soothing to you you can even churn or mix with a whisk you know a bigger whisk a smaller whisk you can uh, you can pound and mash. This is another of my favorite activities I tell parents to do that. Please, whatever you have in your house, whichever you have, the steel one, the brass one, the marble one, the stone one, even the wooden one. And uh, then on the right, you can see these, uh, the presser and the masher, right? We have uh, to crush, to mash the vegetables like when we're making pao bhaji or uh, boiled potatoes or things like that. Uh, Scoop and spread. So when you're scooping also, uh, collect different kind of scoops. Some of them like these ones are medicine bottles. Okay, they come with the medicine bottles. These one comes with the laundry detergent. So any kind of containers that you come across, save them and um, have your child use them in the kitchen or a part of their play. Because again, variation is the key to motor learning. Repetition is the key to motor learning. Variation is the key to motor learning. Uh, you can spread, you can spread with a wooden knife, with a steel knife, you can make holes uh, with a fork, uh, you can spread with a spatula, uh, or you can mix with a spatula. So that variation in the tool is very important. And again, you don't have to go out and buy, you will find it in your kitchen and in your own world. The kinds of um, uh, serving spoons that we all use. So, uh, you know, the child is learning whether this is used for a liquid, these are used for solids. Uh, this is a big one for liquid, this is a medium one, this is a very small one for the oil. We all have them in our kitchens or at least variations of them, have your child use them. You don't have to teach them. Once you have them, use them, uh, they will learn. Uh, they will learn the difference between flat versus, you know, rounded spoons. They will learn, you know, this is a small one for the rice, but actually you can scoop out idlis or doklas with them, these things. So my children used to love to uh, remove doklas from, from that thali, you know, when the doklas were done. So again, you get different kinds of movements when you use different kinds of utensils, different short and long, flat and uh, rounded. Uh, again, uh, all kitchens have this, you know, the chalni we have, uh, not necessarily for hot items. You can have your children filter cold items with this. You can have, this is a lemon squeezer. You can have your child filter out, uh, you know, things pouring in a bottle using this filter. This is a garlic press, which probably nowadays it's come into the Indian market, but this is a great tool for uh, pressing. And then of course the cleaners, you know, we don't only cook, we have to clean. So if you're cleaning bottles, uh, tall and small, you can use the bottle brushes. This is the wire, uh, what we call it pipe cleaners. They're available in India now in craft stores. 
So a lot of parents had them, but uh, they were using it for craft. And I asked them that you can use them to clean like small holes in your vessels, you know, to clean. These are pipe cleaners. And then, of course, the uh, various kind of sponges you can collect. Two or at least two or three kind of sponges you should have in your kitchen because that will give a variety of uh, tactile and vibratory input to your child when the child is cleaning or wiping off the surfaces. Uh, increase the complexity gradually. So uh, instead of age-wise, I've just done younger children and older children. When I say younger children, uh, up to like three to four and older children, four to five and above. So start with playing with pots and pans. Uh, even if your child has not played with pots and pans in their early childhood, it's not too late. You can let them play. Sort vegetables, count vegetables. You mix, you scoop out, involve them in squeezing the dough. Involve them. Even a young child of two and a half, three can make buttermilk, make meaning. Obviously, they will need help, but uh, you can churn the buttermilk or you can mix the lemonade, you know, squeeze the lemon, water, sugar, salt, whatever, and mix it out. Let them coat the oil on containers for idlis and uh, doklas. Uh, let them spread uh, uh, jam and butter. So in the US, even three decades ago, we used to, uh, myself and the OT, we would do sensory motor groups with a whole class of uh, 11, 12 children. And one of the activities we really love to do is making peanut butter, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because that's particular to that culture. So the children learn that uh, spread peanut butter on one slice spread jelly, meaning jam, on the other slice, and then put them together. That means the two parts become a whole. Two parts become a sandwich. Now, when we would do this in uh, with four-year-olds in preschools, uh, you have to see the mess that obviously we created. And more than half the children, their sandwiches were not even edible. You could see the force gradation, meaning the how much force does a child use. Ha more than half of the sandwiches would be destroyed. But it was a great experience because um, the children would, we would have them wash their hands before the activity. And uh, the children would just eat whatever they made, uh, whether it was destroyed or it did come out as a great sandwich or it got, uh, uh, you know, crushed or whatever. And then they, we would end them clean up the table, wipe the table, etc., etc. But here, the same thing you can do, spread butter, spread jam, spread ghee. Uh, whatever you think, you know, just be creative and you can do. Older children can help a lot in additional things like rinsing out the dal and rice for the pressure cooker. Uh, grating, if you feel confident, you can do the grating. Five-year-olds can do this. Fill containers and bottles, you know, with uh, your grocery. Pour out batter uh, as in, um, you know, when you're making the cake or the dosa or something like that. And... Um, the last, I can't see, oh, wash wash and clean because again, after cooking, cleaning is an important part we have to take care about. Emotional health is very, very um, important for all of us. We know that. And we also know that the difference between food cooked with love and food just ordered takeout from outside. So it depends on the frequency with which you do any of these. You know, you cook with more frequency, you cook at home or you take out food from outside. That depends on you, but uh, you know there is a emotional factor attached to it. Uh, you form bonding and connection when the whole family cooks together, uh, like at least two parents and the young children. Uh, emotions again, because associated with fond childhood memories, each one of us remembers at least some particular dishes that are uh, mother made or our grandmother made. Uh, I can see even 80 year olds, my father is a good example, he's 80 years old and he still remembers what his mother made for him in childhood. Uh, so, you know, fond childhood memories, a lot of emotions going on there. Cooking is personalized, cooking is fun if you do it together. And if it is fun, then you have high energy levels. Uh, you know, you don't feel that tired. Again, uh, children learn the responsibility of cleaning and completion of the job. Uh, if you involve them right from an early age, this is my experience that kids value their parents' time and effort much more. They demand much less, they complain about food, and they are less pickier. Uh, if you involve them in the kitchen right from a young age, they grow up into adults who are mindful about eating, and therefore they grow up to take care of their own health. And of course, cooking is very cultural. It grounds you to your own identity to your own region where you come from because you 
cook your own cuisine. Sometimes both parents are from different regions and they can, uh, you know, cook uh, alternately from different regions. That's great. And then if you move out in the world, if you're away from your own uh, native region, your na own native country, you also assimilate cooking styles from uh, other cultures, you know, cooking styles or cooking dishes that are healthier. So, uh, uh, you know, you, you grow up into a sort of a, a well-developed personality or rather your child grows up into a well-developed personality. And my last slide, extended benefits, executive functions. Uh, as your child grows older, you can talk to them, you know, like seven, eight year olds. You need to cook tomorrow, uh, let's say pao bhaji, for example. It just comes to my mind. Uh, if they ask you, mom, make pao bhaji, what do we need for pao bhaji? We don't have it at home. We have to go and buy. So planning for ingredients. Shopping. Yes, we are in the COVID times. And in the last uh, few years, I've seen that there's a lot of, you know, online is convenient. But uh, at the same time, shopping and particularly in the Indian market, take your child at least once a month, at least I would say, right from a young age to an Indian market. Indian market is very sensory. The sensory experiences you get there, you know, seeing heaps of vegetables, seeing the mithai shops, seeing the snack shops, seeing the fruit carts, the vegetable vendors, you know, the noises, everything. Shopping is very sensory and um, a child does need to learn how to go to, sh you know, shop in the market. Uh, how to ask the vegetable vendors whether they want half kg, one kg, exchange money, uh, you know, give whatever 50 rupees note, get back 10 rupees note. These are all life functions. Your child should not grow up to be thinking that groceries arrive at the door. Uh, you know, they have to think about. Then using leftover foods. Every region in India, even when refrigerators did not exist, we know how to use leftover foods, leftover rice, leftover rotis. We have umpteen dishes we can make from there for the next day's breakfast or morning food leftover in the evening. We make, you know, X, Y, and Z. So please teach your child this because it's very important in um, not to waste the food. If you throw away food, you're causing damage to the environment. You're wasting not only your money, but also the efforts of the farmer, the efforts, the benefits from the soil and the water and the air that we get to grow their food. So make your child a little sensitive that we don't waste food. In fact, in India, in our cultures, we say that it's a sin to waste food. You know, we don't throw away food. It's a sin. Savings. Uh, if, if your child learns how to cook on their own, they will uh, save not only food, they will save money and they will save environment. And saving money is a big chunk. If you ever sit down to calculate, it's a big chunk how much you can save. And then the, ch the child grows up into learning a lot about preservatives and the monosodium glutamate and, you know, how these things affect uh, health and the body system. So, uh, you know, a lot of extended benefits to this. So... a very short video of less than nine minutes so please watch till the end two children starting their journey of cooking right from early childhood the child playing with plastic boxes less than a year old enjoying this game better than toys now he moves to the next cabinet to remove the heavy steel utensils he's barely learned to walk at this stage but he pulls himself up gross motor he pulls himself up to get a heavy vessel with the cover down to the floor he struggles he struggles with balance he struggles with motor planning wants the whole thing to come out but can't so he brings a cover out and then the big vessel the big heavy vessel so the body spatial awareness he lowers himself down body uh, body spatial awareness of his relation of the body with the objects and he brings out the utensil. Climbing on a chair all on his own and trying to roast a papad on a gas which doesn't work. He's probably observed the mom doing this many times and he wants to do it himself. He's just a little more than a year old. Now he wants to get down so the flimsy chair he gets down the flimsy chair 
using great balance, figuring out how to use his body to get down from the chair. He's little older than two years old and fascinated with the Indian pressure cooker. Now he's up on a big and heavy chair which he has climbed. And in the same pressure cooker, using tongs, he brings out a pan and he puts the pan again, holding with the tongs. He's only two years and three months and he's using the tongs beautifully, covering the pan and then trying to put the heavy lid of the pressure cooker, just like his mom does cause and effect, pressing a button and something happening in the blender, enjoying the sound. Two and a half year old child who is churning buttermilk or milk. There's a lot of conversation going on, which is muted obviously. She's holding with her left hand and using her right hand to churn, enjoying the process. Again, standing on a chair, so she would have climbed it on her own. She is mixing the batter and then talking about it. What is it? What is the batter about? And she enjoys pouring it again and again, lifting the spoon and pouring the batter. Cutting a cucumber, again less than three years old. Neither the height of the table nor the grasp on the plastic knife is appropriate. But that's okay because she's less than three years old and she's just experimenting. Experimentation is allowed. Nobody gets it the first time or the second time or even the first 10 times. So children should be allowed to explore. She's about two years old trying to roll a roti. The roti is at one end of the rolling board or the chakla. She's too young, so that can be excused. But she also sprinkled the dry flour, which is amazing. Now she's four year old and she has a roti perfectly in the center of the chakla or the rolling bowl. She will roll with increased pressure, pound on it, which may not be okay for adults, but all right for children, they should be allowed to do so. Two children, nine year old and five year old, rolling all the parathas or the bhakris for dinner. They are counting and very proud how many they rolled and then showing off to mom the confidence, the self-esteem, building up skills to, towards cooking dinner. Five-year-old child putting pasta in boiling water. Mom is confident that he will be okay sitting there by the gas. Now grating cheese, looking whether the cheese is coming out from below. He's grating it on the top and he's making sure it's coming out from below. So the relationships up, down. And then he's standing very precariously on the stool. But the mom is okay. Mom is not protecting him. That be careful. Mom is not protecting him. Mom is allowing him to experiment and explore using hands to remove the cheese gratings from underneath. There are three children here making patra or patrode or the arbi ke patte. They are applying paste on the leaves which is very sticky and gooey. So tactile and texture and perfect pores gradation so that the leaf doesn't tear. The older sister is filtering the soup, I think. And the younger one is watching, making sure it comes out from the bottom. They're stirring it. Hand movements. Using both sides of the body. And now eating the soup. Pickling. Children enjoy mixing the salt and the haldi and the mangoes, filling it in bottles, arranging them nicely on the kitchen counter. 
learning a lot of responsibilities. The sister is serving a dosa to the young brother. She goes again to make another dosa. Good force gradation in spreading the batter and making a perfect round. Then she tries to cover it missing something. So she forgot to spray the oil which she does now and then covers it to cook. So this is called sequencing in cooking. We do. Everybody remember the old Akhwagad which came with music. So this child had the responsibility of filling water from the Akhwagad every evening. She climbs up on a stool and in order to fill the water, she dances, uh, she makes body movements to the music. Talk about musical rhythm, motivating body movements. And then how can we forget washing, cleaning? Cleaning, washing, wiping are a part of cooking. Or rather very close adjuncts to cooking. And then last, but very important, they are putting mithai boxes in brown paper bags and then decorating the brown paper bags. So learning about sharing and giving for Diwali, giving it to the bus drivers, conductors, postman, milkman, everybody who helps us all year round. So have fun with kids in your kitchen and derive a lot of pleasure. Thank you.